and then kind of you know, trying. Kind of, where's your emergency? It's 1357 South Water Street. It's off 109. Please hurry. Okay. What's your name? Oh, my God. My name is Aaron Solomon. Great to have you with us and welcome to Channel 4 News today on this soggy oh Tuesday God. morning, April 12th, 2011. I'm Aaron Solomon. It's my son. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is not good. And as soon as I don't see him right here, my heart goes... And I immediately just get weak. And I immediately pull up my phone to call 911. And I'm trying to be calm for them. And I really... I mean, people... Somebody had just run out and said man you need to sit down because you could, they could tell i was getting yeah. weak, but i needed to be strong and i, I gave it. them to you a week at a time it's already and giving. i didn't have to no you don't have to but are you just going to kill them you can't make them stop loving their mom they, no they weren't they weren't being killed when it was not a week on, a week off. I would always tell my mom I felt like I was more like a wife to him instead of a daughter. First, he never let my mom bathe me. It was always him. Dad would just scream at Grant, like I could hear it from everywhere in the house. It was awful. One time, Grant and I were watching TV together, and all of a sudden, Dad comes up and grabs Grant by his shirt, pulls him up, and just yells at him in his face. It was so bad to watch. Because of this, I strongly believe. He killed Grant, and now he's going to kill me. Today, I want to talk about the Solomon family. Now, this case, it is, um, it's really disturbing. Uh, the allegations that are made in this case are very disturbing. It was a tragic incident that happened, okay? Some say it's an accident, some say it was murder. Aaron is the father, Angie's the mother, and they have two kids, Grant and Gracie. Grant was killed in a single vehicle incident where his own truck basically ran over him. There was only one witness there, and that was his father, Aaron. Now, Gracie, Grant's sister, has accused Aaron of horrible things, and Gracie and her mom both are saying that they believe Aaron, the dad, killed Grant. It happened in 2020, but people are talking about it a lot because there's a petition. They want to reopen the investigation into the case. A lot of people believe Angie, the mom, and the, her daughter, Gracie. A lot of people are saying bad things about Aaron. Aaron is well-connected and is suing a lot of people, people who have written articles, people who speak out about this. So that's why I'm saying allegedly, my conspiracy allegedly don't sue me. But first, a quick word from the sponsor and we'll get into the video. This video is sponsored by Native. Native has come out with these deodorant and body sprays and I love the formula because first of all, I love spray. It doesn't leave residue and then also it doubles not just as deodorant but as a body spray. It is actually powered by air. It doesn't have hydrocarbon propellant. Instead, it only has six ingredients which include nitrogen which is an ozone friendly natural propellant. Look at me talking like I've heard about this before. I I love the classic coconut and vanilla. I'm obsessed with the sweet peach and nectar. Those two are very sweet. Um, if you like something a bit more fresh and clean, then the lilac and white tea is also a really good option. If you're interested, use my code NORJASMINE2 to get 20% off your first purchase at Native. And this is available site-wide, but only for a limited time. Thank you for sponsoring the video, Native, and thank you guys for watching. Back to the video. This story really goes back much farther than when Grant died. Grant died in 2020, but this incident occurred in May 9th of 2013 when Angie, Grant's mom, was hanged by a phone cord. Now, both Angie and Aaron agree that this attempted hanging occurred. However, they disagree on how it happened and who's responsible. Angie says that Aaron wrapped the phone cord around her neck and tried to hang her with it and that it was in front of her mom and dad and that her dad actually saw it and said a husband can do what he wants to with his wife. Now Aaron, he says that she did this to herself and the reason why she did this is because she was upset, she was shopping too much, spending too much money and she did this to herself. According to Angie, this was not the first time 
Aaron did something like that to her. She said that he was basically abusive and that she would have to take the kids and run, sometimes go to shelters, lock them in the bathroom with her and hide from him, and that he was prone to fits of rage. And so this was just like the culmination of the abuse that was going on. So Aaron acknowledges that his wife Angie and kids Grant and Gracie had taken to basically sleeping in a separate room altogether away from him but he said it wasn't because they were afraid of him it was because Gracie had an eye surgery and she wanted to like be with her mom and that Grant wanted to keep his sister company and so that's why they were all sleeping together but according to Angie they were terrified of him and basically hiding from him and we'll go into later what Gracie says um, her dad would do to her so in response to this attempted hanging that happened and Angie gets put in a psych ward and in the psych ward they basically determine that they think she's telling the truth the doctor actually said that he thinks her parents are an unreliable source he didn't think she needed to be on medication once Angie is released from the hospital she files an order of protection against Aaron the next day he files for a divorce now this begins a nasty bitter divorce followed by a custody battle that kept going, kept going, kept going, really until um, Grant died almost. So when Aaron filed for divorce, he also filed for a restraining order uh, and from Angie. The judge grants this, and this is the beginning of Angie not being able to see her kids. So the judge basically says she can't have visitation or custody of her kids until she gets another psych evaluation. I want to read you now a quote from this second psych evaluation, what the doctor said. After reviewing the information collected, there is ample evidence to suggest that Dr. Solomon is a fully capable parent. By the way, Angie is a doctor of uh, pharmacology, like a pharmacy doctor. Uh, they say she, there is no data to indicate that Dr. Solomon is at risk of harming her children. The collateral sources, her self-report and the report of her husband contain no information that suggests she might be abusive, neglectful or harmful to the children. So after this, Angie's able to now have supervised visitation with her kids. So there was a psychiatrist who also did an evaluation and this psychiatrist had something to say about Aaron, the husband, he says, that Aaron has, quote, done a masterful job in confusing the court about his wife's actual mental health. He noted that there were multiple comments made by both children that led him to believe that they had, quote, suffered severe emotional repercussions and that they were fearful of Aaron Solomon and remain so still. Despite these experts saying that, the judge still ruled in Aaron's favor. And we'll get into his connections with the judges and in the community and everything like that, but basically, they say that Aaron still should have custody of the children. A year after this, Angie files a petition, the first of many, and she says her kids are being neglected in Aaron's care. And then she says that Gracie is telling her that Aaron, her father, is doing horrible, horrible things to her. So I am going to read you some quotes from the affidavit and the petition, and it is trigger warning trigger warning. Don't say I didn't tell you. At the time of this petition, Gracie was eight years old. Angie says that Gracie told her that Aaron would bathe her, was always there with her when she would take showers or baths, and that he would um, penetrate her with this bar of soap. Okay, I know this is horrific. Um, and he would make Gracie sleep in the bed with him. She wouldn't want to, but he would, quote, require her to. And he would always go with her to the bathroom, like even when she went like number one or number two and would insist on wiping her. And so uh, with Grant, it was different. According to Angie, she took Grant to the doctor and the doctor told her that his blood levels showed that he had an abnormally high level of ketones, which suggested that he was malnourished and that his muscles were beginning to atrophy. And so she suspected that he was starving Grant and then the guardian ad litem for the court said that Grant told her that his dad would tell him that he's too fat and basically would withhold food from him. Now here's the interesting thing, and I'm not sure why this happened, but this petition that I just told you about with Gracie and stuff, it would be withdrawn. Angie would voluntarily withdraw this petition. I'm not sure why, uh, but she did. Over the next four years, Aaron had full custody of the kids. According to Gracie, at one point, he actually told them their mom was dead. They thought their mom had died. 
For 15 years in the area, Aaron Solomon was a newscaster and he was well known in the community. And then shortly after the divorce, he left that job and he became a financial advisor for a company that's under Merrill Lynch. And through this job, he became very close with the governor, the mayor, uh, members of the church, owners of the church, basically wealthy, powerful, influential people in the community, including judges. He went to church with a lot of the judges that were ruling in his cases, and they were basically, you know, friends, you could say. So keep that in mind when you see how these things are judged, because a lot of people think this is a big part of why things played out the way they did. At some point, the kids realize that their mom is not dead, and that she's trying to get them. And in 2018, the kids run away and they go to Angie's home. They want to stay with her. The thing is, there were instances where the kids were basically forced to be with their dad. Like one time, Gracie didn't want to go to be with her dad at school. Like after school, she didn't want to go in the car with her dad. And the principal or headmaster, as he's called in this article, basically was like, you need to go with your dad. And she would cry. She wouldn't want to go with him, but she'd be forced to go with him. Then a year after the kids ran away, there was a very interesting ruling. When I go through these articles, this one comes up a lot because people find it to be pretty odd. And this happens to be a judge that went to the same church that Aaron went to. And this church is also connected to the school the kids go to. It's all owned by them and they're all very close. Angie filed another petition asking for custody of the kids, saying the kids are you know, in good hands essentially. And the judge ends up essentially banning her from filing any more petitions for the next six years, saying that they're basically without merit. And she's like abusing the system. Like you're, you're filing too much, they're without merit you can't file anymore for six years. Now it's 2020 and this is where everything changes. Two huge things happen in 2020. Grant turns 18 and Grant dies. This is within a month of each other. Now, according to friends of Grant, as well as his sister and his mom, they said that he was always trying to protect his sister from his dad. And he told them that now that he's 18, he's an adult, he has more rights legally. He has more influence in the court system. He is going to do something about the situation with his dad and his sister. And he's basically going to protect her from Aaron. So he turns 18. A month later, he's dead. And the only person to witness it is his father, Aaron, who he claims was abusing him. So let me tell you how it happened the way he died, like what led up to it. Two days before Grant died, his mom Angie texted his dad Aaron and she says, I do not think Grant needs to be working out until his lungs are more stable. My opinion is on the record. You are playing with fire. Okay, so the context of this is basically Grant played baseball and he was supposed to meet his dad to practice baseball, but he was just recently recovering from COVID and he got asthma from that. His father had actually arranged for a private baseball lesson, like not lesson with other people, but a private session between him and his son only at this place. The place is called Ward Performance Institute, which I'll be referring to as WPI. So according to the facility manager of WPI, Tyler Mark is his name, he said that Aaron had requested for the facility to remain closed to the public until Grant was done with his practice that day. If this is not what they usually do, but children scream. <laughs> Ew, children screaming. Um, anyway, so um, I did that because I felt like I was a witch. After that first text message that I read you where she's like, you're playing with fire, this is on the record, Aaron didn't respond. She texts him again, he doesn't respond. She texts him again, like midnight, the, the day they're supposed to meet. He doesn't respond. Then she sends him a text the morning Grant died. He does respond to this text, okay? The text says, if you're up, Grant has a change of mind and doesn't want to die in Gallatin. So one of us needs to be there. Will you? If not, I will go and sit in the parking lot. Let me know ASAP. And Aaron rep replies, I'll be there. It's so creepy too because this message says, Grant has a change of mind and doesn't want to die in Gallatin, and he ends up dying in Gallatin. 
So creepy. So Grant drives his truck to WPI. It's a 2015 Toyota Tacoma. It's a white pickup truck. And he goes to meet his dad there. According to this app that Grant had on his phone, it's called Life360. It's like a location tracker app. He arrived at WPI between 8.37 and 8.41 a.m. At 8.44 a.m., his father Aaron calls 911 from the WPI parking lot. I'm going to play this 911 call for you, and I just want you to know that the images and the pictures that are attached to this call are not mine. I didn't put them on here. It's, it's the Justice for Grant YouTube page. They put this, and I'm just going to play the video as it is from that channel. I'm trying. Where's your emergency? It's 1357 South Water Street. It's off 109. Please hurry. You said 57? Please hurry. Okay, what's going on? 1357. Uh, my, my son's truck backed over him, and he, it's rolled over him and dragged him into the ditch, and it's on top of him. He's trapped under the truck, and I... I yeah, he, so he uh, somehow it drug him underneath it. Yes, my son is under it. I'm trying to, no, I'm, I'm trying to call 911. Okay, what's your name? Oh, my God. My name is Aaron Solomon. And you said oh my God. 1357 Southwater Avenue, right? Yes. How old yes. is the male? He's 18. He just turned 18 a couple of weeks, about a month ago my son oh my god oh my god this is not good is he awake and oh please hurry i don't know i don't think so he's not oh he's not alert right no he's out and he's trapped i got three guys here and he's trapped under the truck okay oh my god i understand sir stay on the phone with me while we get somebody out there what's your name aaron solomon all right, Aaron. Huh? What kind of vehicle is it? It's a Toyota Tacoma, Tacoma and it, the, the vehicle has to, he's underneath the vehicle. Okay, I've got the, that. And, and it's, okay, I've got that. What color is it? It's a white truck. That's my son. He, it's somehow it backed up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on, on, I'm on with 911 right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Was your son working on it? No, no, he was just getting out of it. It's the hill. It's, we're on an incline, and I guess he didn't have it in park or something, or it wasn't engaged, or. Oh my God. Is oh my your God, son I can't believe it. Still not this. responding? No, no. And he's still under no. truck. No one can get yes. him out from under it. No, it's no. We saw it's, units and route to you. I'm just asking you questions for we can huh? update him, okay? Can you check and see huh? he's breathing? I, I, somebody's telling me that he's coming too. Okay. Maybe. He is, he is waking up Maybe. Kind, of, kind of keeping still. So he is well, he can't, breathing? Yeah, he can't move. I don't think he can move. I, I don't know. Okay. I understand. No, he can't move. He's trapped. Okay. We got somebody in route. Now, when he wakes I, up, he might I'm be scared. I'm telling him, man. Can somebody I'm just sit down him. there and talk to him? Yeah, somebody talk to him. There. Shit. You see, there's blood. What, is he facing up or down? He's facing up. They said he may aspirate. We need to hurry. Oh, my God. So does he have blood coming out of his mouth? Yeah, he's, yeah. There's blood coming out. Yeah, somehow it drug him down. I think I don't know whether it wasn't in park or what, or if it didn't engage the brake, or it drug him underneath somehow. Okay. They said he's facing up. Okay. But he's bleeding from his mouth. So, Grant, turn your face to the side if you can, barely, but be careful. Don't move him, okay? We can't move him. We can't. We can't move him. Oh my God. All right. 
She's in there there. I'm going to let you go, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Uh-huh, bye-bye. This call is really what a lot of people were talking about when they were suspicious of Aaron's version of events. Now, I'm not going to talk about the whole demeanor thing. Oh, they're calm. Oh, they're too hysterical. They're too calm. They're, they're not hysterical. At all. They're not. Like, everyone's different when it comes to that, so I'm not going to talk about that. The weird thing is those three people that Aaron is referring to on the call were not there when EMT and police arrived and they arrived quickly. Like even Aaron says they arrived quickly, like a couple minutes. So where did they go? And they were never able to question them. The police report says that there was no one there for them to question in terms of witnesses. And they just kind of like vanished. I don't get it. There were no cameras facing the parking lot from WPI, the surrounding areas. There were no cameras they were able to get from that. It was basically just Aaron's version of events. Aaron wrote a written statement for the police, and I'm going to read you the statement. He says, my son Grant and I pulled into WPI separately, parked side by side. I was still in my car, but noticed my son get out to get his baseball gear out of the back of his truck. I looked down to check a work email, and the next thing I know, I hear and see the truck rolling backwards into the ditch. I get out of my car to try and find my son and saw that he was trapped underneath the truck and immediately called 911. That, sorry if you can hear the, the click clack of my dog's nails. So this is another thing people bring up is where was Grant in relation to the car when the car supposedly started rolling? Because at first in this written statement to police, Aaron says that I noticed my son get out to get his baseball gear out of the back of his truck. A week later when he's telling Andrew what happened and she's filming him, he mentions that he didn't actually see where he was coming out and then he like later on says it must have been like the driver's side passenger door. Last time I see Grant right. is literally like this and I see him I don't see the truck rolling yet. Well, yeah. I don't even see it rolling until I see it kind of settling back there. Right at that time, I get like a work email, and I'm like, I just look down for a second to see. So I didn't, I didn't see to the point where he gets to this. I don't. This is the last thing I see. Did he close that door? He was closing the door when okay. I saw him, and okay. so, so and, the, so and the doors right were closed yeah. when I get out. So. So I don't know when the truck started rolling. The only explanation is he tried to save it. That's that's the only thing we can figure out is because we think if he was to the side, he'd be lying down somewhere in here, yeah. maybe knocked the out, maybe the front wheel yeah. runs over his leg and it's broken. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I can. The think only of. way he ends up down here is being behind it. The yeah, that's way. it. That's the, the only, only way. way. Yeah. Okay. That. Okay. Okay. And then later on in the video, he's like, oh, he must have been in the back. So it's kind of confusing. I just love when kids are screaming. It's the best. Did he see it? Did he not see it? It's a little bit confusing. And this is what happens with Aaron. It's like his story changes a couple times every time he tells it. So now let's talk about what happened at the hospital because um, Grant was taken to the hospital by ambulance. Apparently, Aaron declined uh, a life flight transport, which is like when they airlift you to the hospital. He declined that. Um, and unfortunately, the EMTs, they gave Grant CPR for like 30 minutes. They tried all these other life-saving measures and it did not work. And unfortunately, Grant was pronounced dead at 9.30 a.m. So about 45 minutes after his father called 911, he was pronounced dead. Aaron also declined an autopsy. Now, the thing about that is, if the medical examiner feels like an autopsy is required, even if the family refuses or whoever refuses an autopsy, they can still get one. But the medical examiner did not deem it necessary, and Aaron declined one. So there is no autopsy. According to Angie, she arrives at the hospital, and Aaron is already like making funeral arrangements, like planning who the singer like that they're going to hire for the funeral. One of the most contentious documents I would say in this whole thing is the injury report. This is what people talk about a lot by saying like there's no way that he was dragged under this car uh, because the injuries don't match that. The injuries suggest something else. And so the injury report it shows that Grant has lacerations on the back of his head um, and that he was bleeding 
from his scalp where that laceration was and also from his nose and ears. Um, he also had blunt force trauma to the back of his head and then other injuries on his body. There was a bruise on his left cheek. There was another bruise on his right hip and one near his left ribs, but he did not have any other scratches or scrapes or anything else that people say is consistent with being pinned under a truck and dragged. If you look at the pictures, he was dragged from the parking lot down to the ditch and there were rocks there and gravel and he didn't have any sort of rips on his clothing. Um, he seemed like his clothing was clean. Even Aaron was like, he looks good. Like, this is odd. Awesome. And do you agree with this? He was beautiful. Like, there were no scratches. There were no... No, that's the thing. There was no... I was totally going well, up. No, I mean, I was, I was surprised at how good he was. The manner of death is ruled an accident, and the cause of death is multiple traumatic injuries, which led to cardiac arrest, and that was how Grant died. The way that Grant was found, his position of where he was found, is another thing that Angie brings up because his body was actually in between the two tires and. There wasn't anything sort of pinning him down. He was just under there and his head was sticking out. And there's this video of how Aaron describes his body and the position that it was in. And, but the wheels weren't on him? No. So how was he, how did he, he was laying under there. Yeah, his head back over there, but not with the wheel on him. And his head was, he was where? Like at an angle. His, his head was like... Kind of under the axle. Okay, behind, so his feet were this, down the other way? Angled back like that. So the wheels, neither of these tires were on him. But I don't know if the back ones had run over him. I, I don't know. You know, I don't, because I didn't actually Wait, so, see everything. So happen. these tires were in front of him? Correct. Okay. Like, oh, God. So, Aaron, you don't have to do this. I know, but I'm trying to. Like, like an angle like this. So not straight across, not. But behind not. that tire right yes, there. Yes, exactly, exactly. He's angled almost straight across, but slightly across like this. So these wheels, neither wheel was on him, but that part I think was, he. I think he was, his. I think his chest and abdomen area was trapped by the axle, I believe. And where, where were the rocks? All right, so this is actually a decent example of, of how, so this is, so WTI is up here. Then the, the parking lot is kind of like this. Yeah. And then at the edge of the parking lot, it's just like this, a ditch that's steeper than this, down. And then it goes back up. And so down in here is those rocks. Okay. On a little bit of both sides. And then okay. here's 109. So what had happened is the truck actually comes down this, and you can see, I think the bumper got damaged probably when it was when it dug. like there. Yeah, yes, but the tr with the force mm -hmm. was so much, the truck, when it settled, was actually, the front was kind of against that side of the ditch, and the back end was actually stuck up on almost the shoulder of 109. I just want to well, understand. Well, I know, so do I. I mean, I don't... Like, nobody like, no, nobody understands. No, no, I know. I can't either. I mean, there is... It, that's what... It, none of it... It all defies... Is the park... Is the park... Let's first... I have, see, right now, I have the parking brake on. It's a foot parking brake, so it's not one that you pull up here. At first, I'm not thinking worst-case scenario at the very beginning. At first, when I got out of my car thinking, oh, my gosh, and I look around the parking lot and I don't see him, I start coming down this hill, and first I'm looking through the windshield to see if he had hopped back in by chance because he, I don't see him standing up out here. So then I'm like, well, maybe he got back in somehow and I don't look, I don't see him in. And so I'm above the hill and this is the front ends at the bottom of the ditch. And I look down and I, I don't see his entire body because I see his red shirt and his head over here because he's angled that way. So I know that I don't, I know he wasn't covered by wheels up front neither his head nor his feet, but he wasn't perfectly 
perpendicular, he was at a little bit of an angle. I was more in the front of it, and I'm calling 911 immediately. And I'm probably, you know, kind of this far at the top of the pitch on this side of it at the edge of the parking lot. And literally, because I'm, you know, people are like, man, you, you need to sit down. How do you know he wasn't making sounds or? Well, because two dudes came and they, they, I mean, I could, I could see that he was unconscious and I could not, he is not, I could see that he wasn't moving his mouth. And I was close enough to see that. And they said he was not moaning or, I mean, he, there was no, there was no sounds. Um, they could see the two guys that, that had the construction dudes, whatever they were, they stopped and they were trying to help and assess and they said he was unconscious. Uh -huh. I look over the first when we first pull up and he's looking at his phone and wrapping something up and then I've got, I'm checking to make sure work emails that are coming in aren't something I need to address. My car is still running with air conditioner on so I can't hear if his is on or off. But the last, so I look down, then I look back up and I see him because we were early. I mean, we, yeah. we had like plenty of time. So there was no rush. We had our time. So the last I see is him literally like right here closing this, about to open this. And I'm thinking, oh, he's just going to get his gear. And I'm going to check this email to make sure it's not important. And then I'm going to get out and we're going to go in. Did he have his ball cap on then yeah. and everything? Yeah. Had his hat on, had his glasses on, because I. And then, and that's the last you glasses. saw him was right yeah. there. Yes. And the truck wasn't rolling at that no. point because well, you would have noticed it. Right, right, right. So here's the thing: I don't know whether he got this and it started rolling, and he tried to stop it and got knocked down, or if he was in here and then it knocked him down and knocked him out. Here's the thing: I wish mm -hmm. I knew. I mean, I know both exactly. of y'all do. I know, you know it's, it's like And me haunting. being there makes it even worse for me because I'm like, what? I'm, I'm so I mean, sorry. I wish I had, I, now in yeah. mindset, I just wish I had gotten out right when I, I got. Or if know. I had just gone with him, well, right? You know? I mean, there's so many what ifs. That's why I said it had so to be mean. a God thing because it's so freaky. Like, it's yeah. so freaky. Here's the thing whether it was in park or in drive doesn't really matter because either way it shouldn't roll back honestly yeah now, and then it needs now, to be recalled somebody yeah, looked well, up that to that these trucks have a mechanism that uh, in drive they don't roll back mm -hmm. well and maybe I, I don't know okay here's drive Yeah, but yeah. go up a little more, Aaron. Go up a little more, and then and then. Now what happens? It goes forward. Well, I don't know. The only thing I can think is maybe it was in. But even I don't know. Now see right here, it's it's in drive and it's not moving. But okay. It's not as steep as it is there. But if right. if my dad's theory was true that that it was jumped out of gear and it jumped to reverse, he can't get. But if it jumped after after he got out. Right. Well, hold on. Yeah. What's that? Well, I just tried to see if I could even put it in park where it's over where it shifts and it won't even stay there. It automatically goes over here. So Okay. I don't know. It's just so free. Wait, you did what? That makes sense. No, I was trying to see see how park it goes in there i was trying to see like you were saying would it pop out of park? it can't because it has to go over to the column right so it won't stay there it won't stay right there to possibly pop down to reverse no. i mean just, what i don't know none of it makes sense and because i didn't see the whole thing i mean nobody knows except god Do you see Well, I, I'm not. You want it? I yeah, I think, do want it. I think so. And this, I'm not look, there's blood positive. on that too. So, like last night, I was. Oh, Aaron, you don't have to do that. It's like this. The you don't have to do that. Open. The right front tire is right here. The left front tire is in front of his legs. Up front, so he's fully underneath the truck. So he's fully underneath they the truck. His feet. So, based on all this, 
Grant's mom felt like they needed to do an investigation. She's like, I don't know what happened, but this story is not adding up and I want to do an investigation, but uh, they would not do one and the case is essentially closed. Now, according to Angie, she feels like what happened to Grant is more consistent with him being hit in the back of the head and that this whole thing was staged because A, Grant had baseball bats in the, in his truck. B, one of those baseball mats, bat, baseball bats was missing. And C, the truck was in park. And there was this whole thing where people were like, how did the truck actually roll? If the truck was in park when they found it, how did it roll? Like nobody put it in park after the fact. Aaron didn't go down there. And he never actually got to go over there. He says that when the police came, they made him go away. They didn't want him to see the extraction. What did the truck malfunction? Was it ever really rolling over him? Did someone drive it? We're going to talk about all that later when they did the, the forensics and all that. This is where it gets weird with the truck and what Aaron did with the truck and the whole thing. Because at first, Aaron starts giving away Grant's belongings, the things that were in the trunk, like his baseball bats, his things, he's giving them away. Then he continues to drive that white truck for months. He drives a truck that either malfunctioned and is not safe to drive, a truck that ran over his son, according to him, and his son died under this truck. I mean, there's even footage of Angie like when she's asking him a week later about like how did this happen and he's giving her the play-by-play -play, and there's like what looks like blood splatter underneath the truck. Hey Mel, do you have your readers? Can I borrow them, somebody's? And so if this story is completely true and this horrific accident happened, it's kind of creepy that he would continue to drive this truck that malfunctioned and killed his son with the blood spatter still on it. And just, I don't know, it's weird. I don't know if he was, he didn't seem like he was preserving the evidence because he was, he was using it and touching it and driving it. So I don't know, that part is really, I don't know, maybe it's just me. In this video, which happened a week after the accident, when Aaron is going over what happened, he keeps saying like, yeah, it totally doesn't make sense. Like, this is a freak accident. This is a God thing. This is a God thing. This is a freak accident. Like, he kept saying that. He's like, it totally doesn't make sense. I don't know. It's just so freak. Wait, you did what? None of it makes sense. Dang, I mean, there's just, I don't know. None of it makes sense. And because I didn't see the whole thing, I mean, nobody knows except God. Is, and the other thing too is if it did malfunction, like it should be recalled or there should be an investigation. It should, it should be reported. Maybe this could be prevented from happening to other uh, 2015 Toyota Tacoma if there's something going on with the brake where it's releasing and reversing and running people over. You would think, but none of that happened. So you've got these inconsistencies with his story. Like, did he actually see Grant? Did he not see Grant? Did, was Grant on the side of the truck or was Grant behind the truck? Um, and then you've got like this bizarre sort of car malfunctioning thing and the injuries that don't seem to match and the backstory where it was like he was turned, he just turned 18. He was going to testify against his father. He was going to essentially ruin this guy's life. But if he was to say this guy's sexually abusing my sister and abusing me and it becomes public, Aaron's life is over in the community, in his business, in every aspect. So was there like a motive for Aaron to silence the person who was coming for him? Yeah, there was. Was there a history of him hurting Grant? Depends on who you believe. Many people claim there was a history of that. So this is how we get to the whole thing where they think uh, Aaron basically got away with murdering Grant. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. My conspiracy allegedly don't sue me. Not only did Aaron keep the truck and drive the truck, but he declined forensic testing on the truck. Then he drove it around for a couple months and then he tried to get rid of it by basically having an insurance uh, agent declare it totaled when it was not totaled. Like it actually said it had minimal damage, but 
that insurance agent declared that it was totaled and then based on that he sold it to a scrapyard and basically like tried to get rid of the truck. Angie, she went through a lot to get this truck and she ended up hiring a private investigator. The private investigator is the one who found out that there was some sort of insurance fraud going on because the truck was not totaled, it was just minimal damage, even goes and tries to speak to the insurance, insurance agent and the agent is like dodging them. And eventually she gets the truck, she does a forensics exam on the truck and the result is pretty damning. So there is something similar kind of to a black box in vehicles that can tell you if there's like an impact and a few details about that. It said that there were two recorded impact events and it said during both of these recorded impact events the driver's side seat belt was fastened and both the acceleration and the brake were used in maneuvering the car. That's saying that there was someone behind the wheel and acceleration and brake was used if the story is that nobody was in the car and Grant just got out of the car and the car started rolling. Why would the seat belt be fastened if he's out of the car? Why? How could the acceleration and brake be used? Did someone get in the car and run Grant over? So one of the main issues that I found with this case, like so many of these unanswered questions of like, was it this, was it that? It all really could have been solved if the police had done an investigation and not just taken Aaron for his word. If they did forensics on the truck, if they secured the crime scene, if they had the highway patrol do an investigation, all of these things, they had an autopsy, all of these things would have answered a lot of these questions. But because they took him at his word and because click clack of my dog's feet. Another thing that's pretty odd is that Aaron actually volunteered and was a big part. He was on the board of this charity organization called Our Kids. And what this charity does is, quote, provides expert medical evaluations and crisis counseling for victims of child sexual abuse. So the people who believe Gracie and they believe what she's saying about Aaron, they find it really sinister that a man who would do those things, allegedly, my conspiracy don't say me allegedly, allegedly, would be so involved in a charity that is essentially where his alleged victim would go to for help. And now he's on the other side. You get what I'm saying? I don't know, whatever. So Grant died in 2020. By spring of 2021, the social media campaign began. Voice crack. On the same day, an Instagram page called Freedom for Gracie was started. Uh, a YouTube channel was started, Justice for Grant, and they posted several YouTube videos, the one where Gracie is talking about what happened. My name is Gracie Solomon. I'm 14 years old and I'm here to tell my story. That it's coming straight from me. It's all me. And no one else is telling me. What to do. My brother died protecting me from my father, Aaron Solomon. My father's a monster. It makes me want to vomit. He's a rapist, he's a molester, he's a liar, and he's a killer. He has caused so much pain to my family. He has tried to manipulate me and has manipulated others, and it has worked. First, he never let my mom bathe me. It was always him. So by not letting my mom come in at all, it meant that he could do anything to me. I would always tell my mom I felt like I was more like a wife to him instead of a daughter. I had to learn to hide my body from him by flipping my hair over because he wouldn't leave me alone while I was showering or getting out. After showering, he would sit me down in his lap with only a towel to brush my hair. <laughs> he brushed through my hair so aggressively I would sometimes cry. I had terrible scars from that and they are still so much as me. I even remember taking a bath as a young kid, probably first grade, and him washing me with the Dove Bar soap completely up and inside of my thighs. I know now that it was probably his hand. All of my grandparents knew about the abuse and still supported him. When I was at his house at night, I would sometimes feel like I couldn't control my body, or I would get sleepy and wake up in my dad's bed. One night, I woke up with rashes on my inner thighs, both, and my privates also burned for a day. 
In the car, if you said something that made him mad, he would speed up really fast and it would scare me to death. Dad is super manipulative and has manipulated so many people. He even tries to convince me that I am being brainwashed by my mom and everything I remember never happened. Later on, he told me that I was never going back to my mom and that she was actually dead. I don't remember when I found out that she was alive, but I know Grant and I both believe she was dead for years because of him. We stopped at a hotel room in Asheville. My dad only got one bed when I had asked for two. It made me really nervous before we even got in the hotel room. When we went to bed, I remember him slowly getting closer to me until I was on the edge of the bed. I kept waking up and feeling his feet rub against mine. I kept waking up and then finally realized I felt something hard on my lower back close to my breath. I drew an illustration of what it was like. I felt really scared and knew it was wrong. Now, ever since Grant passed, he ignores everything I have said. He is trying to force me to come live with him this Sunday. I am so terrified of him. I am so scared. I can't go general or without Grant. I am not going. Because of this, I strongly believe he killed Grant and now he is going. One of the things Grant said when Dad tried to kill her was, when I'm 6'4", you will not be able to do this anymore. Dad would just scream at Grant, like I could hear it from everywhere in the house. It was awful. One time Grant and I were watching TV together, and all of a sudden Dad comes up and grabs Grant by his shirt, pulls him up, and just yells at him in his face. It was so bad to watch. Dad would get into Grant's head so much. He would limit food and call him fat. The day my dad took us, Grant tried to get out of the car to jump out to get back to mom. When he tried, dad grabbed Grant's wrist so tight, Grant thought it broke. And recently still, I would notice Grant touching that same wrist. Grant had a plan to run away with me, so we did. We got a few things together and went to our mom's house. Dad is and was an awful dad to Grant. I would never want Grant to even have to know somebody like him. And I'm happy for Grant, because he will never have to do it. Grant was even scared enough to open up to Pastor Steve about help for our family, Grant, Mom, and I. Pastor Steve and Dad lied and said Grant wanted to talk about his faith and strengthening his faith. That was said during the funeral, even though Mom and I have always known he went for help because he told us. One of Grant's great friends told me that Grant had plans to reopen and testify for me and him again in court as an adult. A month after his 18th birthday, he had mysteriously died. I want my dad gone. This is from October 21st, 2020. Ever since Grant, my brother passed, three months ago yesterday, my dad, Aaron Solomon, has been stalking us and just coming at us by throwing away and forgetting about boundaries I had set. I set boundaries for myself a while back, and he pretty much went by those for almost two years. But why when Grant died, he came up to me. He literally just entered himself into our home and was hugging me and playing with my hair. I hated when he did that. It makes me gag and it makes me think of the things that he's done. What makes me even more scared is that I've witnessed how mad he gets and when he's mad, I know he's really mad. I know he killed my brother and now I'm scared of him coming near me or coming get me again or hurt any of us. Then you had another video posted by the same channel where a friend of Grant, like a classmate of Grant, she is talking about her experience with Grant and what Grant told her. I met Grant in the second semester of my eighth grade year when I transferred from Heritage Middle School to GCA. The first conversation I had with Grant started off pretty intense. He received a text and then announced to our lunch table, quote, I hate my dad. Grant then went on to tell me that his father, Aaron Solomon, had molested Gracie, his younger sister. And he explained that he remembers it all the way back from when she was a newborn. Grant told me he was terrified of his father because Aaron had so much power. He then told me Aaron could get away with anything. He said he had watched Aaron try to kill his mother but was luckily unsuccessful. I could see the toll this took on Grant at school. He would miss random days and then come back not smiling or being his upbeat self. I texted him to check in and he told me he didn't understand why his dad won and was able to walk away free. Then Grant turned 18. A month later, Grant died. After the social media campaign, Aaron sues like 30 people for defamation and he's trying to get all these things done to silence them and stop them from talking about the allegations that Gracie made and even to prevent 
Gracie from being able to monetize anything with her name uh, without his permission. As it stands right now, Aaron has denied all the allegations with Gracie, with Grant, everything, and he has not been charged with anything. So I do want to say that those are the facts. Now I want to talk about the theories. And so this is where I need my protection from lawsuits. Let's start with the accident theory, which is the official story. So the people who support the accident theory, they're basically saying that it's it's not that of crazy of a story. Yes, it's a freak accident for sure, but you know, cars do come out of gear and it, it could have happened where it just happened so fast and Aaron didn't exactly see what happened and he couldn't help him and the injuries are you know, all in the head, like maybe the reason why it didn't drag him is it bounced and then it landed on him and then didn't necessarily like grab him and pin him down and, and, and drag him all the way. It could have been a few sort of bounces and then he got pinned down. With regards to the allegations that the kids are making, uh, people say, well, it's the mom. She's angry about the divorce. She has mental health issues and she is like feeding this information to the kids. And so they discredit the kids by discrediting the mom and saying that the mom influenced the kids. People also say, hey, like the experts, you know, like the police, the judges, the attorney general, uh, the, the responding people, the medical examiner, all these people didn't find it necessary to investigate. Are they all in codes? Like, are they all like, what is going on? All of them are bad. Maybe they are the professionals and they saw something that to them wasn't out of the ordinary and they didn't find a need to investigate. The accident theory really is like, do you trust them? They're doing their job right. This is what it is. But then when you go and talk about the foul play theory, people are like the, the motive, the means, the opportunity, all there. Who would want Grant dead? His father, because he was coming for him, was going to basically ruin his life. Who could have done this to him? His father, he was there. Was there an opportunity for him to do this and get away with it? Yes, he scheduled a private session. No one was there, there are no cameras there, and just his version of events. Even the witnesses he claimed he was talking to, some people go so far as to say there weren't even people there. He lied about that to make an excuse as to why he didn't go down there and help and be on the phone. There, were no, there was no one there because how could they have gone so quickly when the ambulance arrived? Like you could hear the sirens while he was still on phone with 911, supposedly talking to these witnesses. And where are they? So then you have Gracie and what she says. And it's like, is she lying? Is she telling the truth? I don't like to see people who come out and say things that horrific that are not easy to say that are that your whole community is going against you and you're going to be shamed for it. It's not like people, people think you get embraced with open arms when you talk about someone powerful or someone in your life uh, who does that to you. That's not how it goes down. Most of the time you get pushed back. Also, statistically speaking, only two to 5% of these things that are reported are false. Now, of those false reportings, a lot of them do have sort of an issue where the parents are going through some sort of bitter custody battle or bitter divorce battle. So there is that likelihood where does this fall into the two and 5% because of that divorce? Like, did the mom make the kids do it? I don't know. I, I, to be quite honest with you, my opinion on this is I'm leaning towards believing Gracie and what she said. I think that Aaron comes off a little disingenuous, just gut instinct, you know, no facts on that. Again, my theory. Um, could could this be a case where he did this to his son? It could be. Crazier things have happened. Crazier things are going to happen. This could be one of them. So I don't know. I really wish what comes from all this and people talking about it is with whatever information is left that is valuable that they can redo the investigation and find out once and for all definitively if this accident happened the way Aaron says it did or if it was something else entirely and then take it from there. So that's my opinion on it. Um, I hope this video is somewhat useful. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Native for supporting my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!